Can you all hear me? Yes. Um, Where's yes, Sasiak? No. He's the one with the slide deck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he says he's here. <laughs> all right, LCP. Hello. Yeah. All right. At least we can hear you. Yeah. That's, have had it, gentlemen. That's useful. Wait, I have to start this and that and all right. All right. All right. Wow. All right. Here we go. We kind of did it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, let's. Who are we? We are the heroes, and that means we are a structured team at OpenSUSE, which is a rarity. <laughs> I think that's the hero, the her heroics in itself. Yes, maintainers of the majority of OpenSUSE infrastructure, which means that we may not maintain the most important parts of the infrastructure, but we maintain the vast majority of it. Uh, and uh, that means services that, that fall outside of the jurisdiction of SUSE itself. We don't maintain build service because that's, that's what SUSE does. And we don't maintain something else and I'm forgetting what now that, that doesn't matter. We maintain most of the things that, that fall under open source infrastructure umbrella. We, we don't maintain the build service and we do not maintain the SUSE bugzilla. Oh yeah. That I forgot about the bugzilla. <laughs> Everybody forgets about the bugzilla. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is a talk about the future of of uh, the infrastructure but we we should start probably from the uh, beginning so from the uh, what what we did the, what we did this year and this was quite kind of uh, an eventful year for us because uh, a bunch of things were migrated from uh, from microfocus because of that whole thing where Microfocus sold Suze to somebody else. Uh, you know. Stasiak, are you moving the slides? I am now. So this year in review, <laughs> uh, we migrated news planted search to Jekyll, which was a great thing because that allowed us to uh, to develop it all, all on GitHub which is a great thing because that means that we can collaborate on things much easier and don't have to uh, rely on um, rely on on one body of people who can actually modify those things. Uh, we moved uh, TSP from Connect, which is a great thing because Connect kind of kind of is on its way out and for those of you who don't know Connect, it's the uh, basically the main part of of the infrastructure we use for knowing who is who in the project outside of Open Build Service, and we use it for uh, for uh, gaining uh, memberships for for the contributors and also some management related to that, uh, to those memberships. Uh, then we also had that move from uh, MX, uh, from, the, from the mail mail machines that were set up by SUSE. We moved those to open SUSE. That, that is kind of important because that allows us to have a working postmaster address which is a great thing, I guess. Mm. And, and also forums were moved to the Heroes Network. And that's 
cool because <laughs> we uh, we really didn't have any insight into those those forums before we actually migrated. Uh, so so uh, also uh, the thing that happened uh, recently was uh, SUSE community accounts were created by SUSE because of you know uh, uh, Microfocus no longer wanted to maintain our accounts. Maybe they wanted, but but it it was better for us to actually move over to uh, to commit uh, to to Suze accounts because because that means that we can actually uh, have something that is kind of maintained close by, not necessarily by us, but but by by people who we have a better contact with. Mm. Beyond that, uh, beyond that, we had a whole bunch of things deployed, which, uh, well, it's uh, it's it's a great thing to uh, to have uh, some some more software that we can use as the project because you know the heroes have to. Uh, mm, support the the community of developers that that is uh, that is the open source community, and we do that by by having but by maintaining a, a whole bunch of of those things. A among those were GC Meet, which is useful for for you know meetings, like like this. Uh, Moodle, which which I actually don't know. What we are hosting there right now, because I know I know there are some. I think. Uh, I believe the Moodle is brand new. <clears throat> yeah, the Moodle the Moodle is brand new. It it yeah. Was, it has some it's, it it has some courses about some things. I don't know exactly. I think the idea is that um, there are some members of the Open Source community who are interested in using Moodle to help uh, fill out a portfolio of tutorials and other kinds of things mm. to help people like onboard into the community and to also be able to put in, have a place for technical um, learning material for OpenSUSE people to host and put in there. Like, you know, learning how to do some, how to deploy some service in OpenSUSE or how to do um, using Cubic or things like that. So I think that's where Moodle's going to come in. Although again, it is. I think we just literally got it a week or so ago. So I don't, I don't know what we're gonna uh, how how it's gonna go. I think it was a, more than that, but but maybe I don't know. The, it was announced the, last week, so yeah. also not sure about that. I know it was mentioned in in some email chain because because that that that's probably when I heard about it at all. So yeah, then then we have Lime sur survey uh, deployed, which is which was already used for for some surveys, user surveys used to for, for knowing some some things about our users we didn't before. Uh, Matrix Synapse, which we use for uh, pretty much bridging pretty much every every part of our. Uh, Chat infrastructure outside of uh, outside of our own infrastructure. The the Synapse node is not quite ready for may, maybe for usage for everybody, but but it's getting there. I hope. Uh, and then there there is Mailman free, which is not yet used, but it is deployed and it is being migrated as we speak. It is literally running in in the background right now eating away at the soul of Stasiak's laptop yes well it's it's happening on the vm so it's not doing much locally but yeah it's it's happening and then there were there were there were uh, there were updates to redmine and etherpad that were pretty much unmaintained for a while they kind of uh, fell behind they had to be updated 
which finally happened this year, which is great news because it, it's it's a real shame to have any piece of infrastructure that that falls behind. Uh, because of course that 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 is a security issue and 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 its functionality isn't there and it's it's a shame to to have any piece of infrastructure that falls behind. So there also was. Um, we also started deprecating all old machines that that were run that are still running on uh, on older releases like uh, C11, C12, Fedora 24. That which... one hurts a little. That one, <laughs> that one really hurts. Uh, uh, that's I, I don't know. That's like fi five years or something. It's no less than that. It's it's a lot of time. It's it's really it shouldn't it shouldn't exist. It it really really should have been operated way before that. And that's that's our uh, free IPA machine. So that really really should be updated. We are we are planning on moving it to a yes. CentOS eight based system. It is yeah. in staging. We're just trying to do the data migration, which is complicated. Pretty much, pretty much everyone, every single one of those machines have have a plan for migration. It's just a matter of actually implementing it. It's it's a kind of a lot of time to to actually do everything. Uh, so. This was the past, and hopefully it will it'll be, it will be the past in the in the near future. But uh, before us is lays the the great great future of actually working infrastructure, which is amazing. Hopefully, at some point. <laughs> so many qualifiers, Stasiak. <laughs> I, I I feel like we we're actually on a pretty good path at this point. We we've got our our house in order in terms of what applications and services we want to offer. Um, we're at this point almost entirely um, uh, operating off of salt-based management. So we actually know what all of our machines are. I, I can say that many places cannot claim the same. Uh, so uh, we're- I don't know if we know everything, but we know a lot, a lot of things about- We know everything that we're supposed to know. Yes, ho ho hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Uh, so okay, so uh, you should take credit for one more thing that was not mentioned. I wrote it in the chat. So for Redmine that I use quite extensively, um, you know, we haven't had the test instance before, and suddenly oh yeah, that's true. We now have staging instances for at least half of our applications, so we can actually play with it. Yeah. Yeah, that that is useful. Yeah, I think However, um, the pl all of our applications are eventually going to have staging instances, if not by the end of this year, by mid next year. So, we're awesome. in. Yeah, so like we don't want to test and dev in production because that's scary and also stupid. Yeah, <laughs> it, it kind of is. Uh, so, so. We had some requests. We had some requests, not not a lot of requests, but, but we had some requests to actually have a Git forge, which would be useful for for hosting some code. And some of them can't be hosted on GitHub. However, you 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 try it. It really it really wouldn't work out. And for those cases, we actually do need some infrastructure that could could be a good enough git forge for us to use and we had some uh, forges let's say it was just cgit listings uh, for for different uh, for different projects like kernel had one and i think there was something else that i went pro there, there was a Yast used server. to have one. There, I think Yast used to have one. There uh, was, was one. There was I, one for. Um, I think it was SVN. And yes. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that was SVN. 
Uh, yeah. Open QA, I thought had one, but that might have also been SDN. It's it's a little hard to remember all the different yeah. ones that yeah. we have proceeded to kill over the last year. Yeah. Uh, so the project that that we chose for this task that that would be deployed today if I didn't if I wasn't uh, working on mailing lists uh, is Pagur, which I can't pronounce apparently. You're doing fine. <laughs> I mean, I, is... I think Pierre is not going to like twitch when you say it. Hopefully. So that that's a win. Yeah, uh, which is a uh, Python free based uh, um, Gitforge, which which is a great thing because I hope everybody is able to at least somewhat patch um, Python free, which which is a bonus for for any project. Uh, the the upstream is really responsive, and I know firsthand after contributing to it very few times, which is a shame. I I would love to contribute some more, and I will have to, because there are some things I I have to actually uh, add. Mm, we uh, we have a, we have some similar use cases to what uh, the current Pagur instances are used for, which is. Uh, task management and and using it as a as a base for uh, this git and stuff like that it, it, it there there are quite a few things that that just just work in our favor in case of uh, in case of using the this this base and uh, the api is isn't isn't stupid which is <laughs> <laughs> I love how this is now a, a bullet point we need to have. The API isn't stupid. Yeah, <laughs> especially about about uh, Git forges, which is which is kind of a shame. But but you would expect Git forges would, wouldn't be this this dumb, and also it integrates with with our existing existing Jenkins, so we could use that for CI question mark hopefully right um and also because pagger supports a message bus to emit messages on it uh when commits and stuff like that happen we can wire this into the existing RabbitMQ that exists for open infrastructure and and other services can react to events that happen um on the pagger instance the idea is that um at least we're going to start for heroes we're going to start with um our internal, our salt repos, and we're going to pull the project management related to infra, OpenSUSE heroes into uh, into Pagger out of Redmine um, to put it closer to the code and see uh, and, and handle that. And there's a couple of other projects um, uh, that are uh, in the pipeline that are going to use Pagger as our uh, as our forge for supporting um, some interesting use cases. I believe there's some talks later in this conference about, uh, for example, uh, OBS and Git, for example. So uh, th these are uh, use cases we're thinking about for for Pagger in, in OpenSUSE infrastructure. Yeah. So the next thing is accounts management, which is uh, mm. <laughs> kind, kind of a topic on its own, since Connect is kind of dead. And uh, uh, Stasiak, hold on. Um, people other than me are saying in the chat that the slides are not moving. Huh. Apparently, yeah, the future slide has been showing up for. Um, Five minutes. Oh, I can see something change. Hey, now it it changed. What did you do? I I alt tabbed. Okay, you can't. <laughs> you you need to alt tab every time you change slides, because so, yeah. I think we missed the last couple of slides entirely. Yeah. All right. So uh, I will I will alt tab back. And yeah, now... can you just like quickly flash through some of the earlier slides just in case you know yeah, we might have missed sure. some. I can I can alt tab back into the app, which will allow me. <laughs> nope, that doesn't work. 
Wow. Yeah, uh, problems. <laughs> welcome, welcome to our world. <laughs> huh, that's interesting. Oh, now it changed. Whoa, whoa, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Hey! All right, now we change again. Okay. And hopefully. All right, when you change the slide, does it change on screen? Nope, it doesn't. No. <laughs> I love this. This is great. <laughs> this is A. Plus. Oh, yeah, here, here we go. All right, All right so you got the time. magic incantations. All right, I don't know what I did. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, connect, connect is dead. Uh, that, that's that's a simple thing to to uh, to admit. We kind of have to get rid of it. It's on a SLI eleven, I think. SP two, uh, I think. Yeah, Maybe. it's a very old SLI eleven server that we're all kind of worried about. It also hosted some other things before, but those were kind of moved because that's problematic uh, so we need a replacement of course uh, we need to look up what what we do and what other others to reach out to us and and how how to contact everyone else and what group each uh, every person uh, belongs to preferably we would like to also tie this into one system that does also the entire account management because those things weren't uh, the same thing before the account management and user profiles will were two different things and that's kind of problematic because suddenly you have to log in for uh, at least once to to the uh, to the uh, user profiles service to actually show up on the service and that kind of doesn't work too well with with uh, just reaching out to anybody you actually need to reach out to. Uh, so we kind of uh, found uh, login, not really found because it it actually only started existing uh, like. Uh, years after having been looking for something, uh, it it is a fairly new Python free based again uh, uh, user management solution based on free IPA, which is great because Heroes already use free IP for other other things, and uh, marrying those things together would be a great thing for maintainability. Just saying. Uh, it also uh, shows so shows user profiles and groups. It's it's fairly fairly good looking. It's it's surprisingly good looking for uh, for a piece of software. Uh, I, I feel slightly. I feel like this is um, this is you being having low expectations here. Well, I have seen other systems. <laughs> That's fair. They're not. They can't all be winners. They are mostly not winners. Uh, so the then the, the system is very extensible because of using the the uh, free IPA back backend, and we can very easily add uh, some more things to it because of how free IPA works. It it allows for custom fields. It's it's pretty good at, at being being uh, an IPA. That's surprising. Uh, uh, AppStream is fairly active. It's hard to tell how it will look in, in months time or years time, because uh, currently it's actively being developed. It's I don't think it's particularly uh, ready yet uh, for prime time, uh, even though it is ready for prime time because it has to be. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like to kind of. The most important part about Noggin um, versus what we currently have, which is a mess, um, Noggin doesn't itself implement anything really. It is a front end for the existing free IPA server and, and uses the free IPA APIs 
so that there's things like self-service interactions for user profiles, um, group management, uh, things like of that nature. So because of that, the, the actual Noggin application is fairly lightweight and somewhat simple compared to the, to the actual backend, which has a years of track record of being actively maintained and, and uh, yeah. supported. Yeah. So it's a lot less scary than than our current situation. Yeah, especially since it's a fork of, of a fork of, of something that's that just just a thing. It's it's not good. It really isn't. And the API is reasonable just because it uses free API again. So so that's great. And also it has a, a Fed message integration. Which is also it. It also could be useful. Mm. So next we have switching slides. Oh, right, all right. It's hey, good. it worked this time. <laughs> uh, and open source forums. And open source forums is an interesting case because we are still using Bibliotin four, which is unmaintained and it's yeah. also proprietary, and <laughs> and so it's a nightmare and it kind of looks terrible so maybe it would be the time to switch it over to something else and i only have one bullet point because really there there isn't isn't much more needed to to explain why we would like to replace it uh, so the solution to that is switching slides uh, uh, it showed up <laughs> yeah i know i i made sure it showed up uh it's uh, discourse and discourse may be known to you because everybody is switching to discourse for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because it's modern and easy to use. Maybe I don't know. It has a lot of plugins and that means that we actually wouldn't need to implement anything else because uh, on one hand, on the one hand, we kind of already have all the plugins we need. And on the other, I already implemented some, some things that, that may be useful for us in there, in the upstream. So that's that's very good. And the upstream is really active. It's really hard to keep up with, with the development of this course because of how, how active the upstream is. At least the uh, churn isn't breaknecking, breakneck pace insane. It's It's still fairly reasonable in terms of the release cadence um, and 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 code churn though. Yeah. Mm, that that means we may be switching uh, to this course in the near future, which may be a little bit hard because the emails thing, where I'm not really sure how we are going to perform this migration. That's that that will be a little bit hard. Let's let's see how that goes. All right. Uh, so open to the mailing list, uh, and open to the mailing list, and switching slides again. All right. Uh, open to the mailing list are uh, basically what you would expect from mailing list, which is which is operated mostly with emails and uh, and commands in in shell, which which is fine, I guess, but if we could have something better, maybe we would use it. Also, the archives are really hard to look at sometimes, and I would really, really love to switch to something else. And that means we are switching to Mailman 3. And, or, again, switching slides, all right. Uh, and Mailman 3 is really cool because it allows us HyperKitty, which is mailing list arch archiver that doesn't suck. Uh, it actually, kind of looks like uh, like forums which is great thing because it's really a lot a lot easier to to navigate than than traditional mailing list archives and also includes features like actually uh, composing messages from the browser instead of just using uh, email uh, composing from the uh, browser requires login so of course that means you actually have to have some login, but it doesn't doesn't mean you have to have uh, you have to actually log into to your email to 
post from there you just need to log into HyperKitty. Uh, it may be useful for people that that are lazy uh, and also people that are very very not used to using mailing lists. Uh, and then there is Pistorius, which which is also great because it allows us uh, ma maintenance of mailing lists and moderation of mailing lists uh, from the browser and also from API and from other things, which is actually really useful because that means we don't have to go f go and log into uh, the uh, VPN to to change anything and log in then then to uh, to the machine and, and stuff like that. We just have to uh, we just have to log in in the browser and and change things and have them be active right away. It's it just it's just a better solution than than one than, than the the thing we have right now. And it's my, my migrating in the background, so I am seeing the. The things moving, so it's good. It, it's 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 gonna happen hopefully uh, in a week or something. I hope it's really just saying that that this is uh, something that uh, will hopefully happen in a very near future. Considering that uh, how slowly the migration for the older mailing list goes. It actually may need may require to be uh, the next week and not this week how I, how I hoped before. It it just it just life. It's, it, I I have to deal with with slow things all the time. All right, and that's basically all all of it. I think uh, you ho you should join us because uh, we are cool and and. Uh, we do cool things, and also with your help, we could you could do we could do more cool things like actually um, deploy uh, Pagur and and Discourse, which would be great. We didn't yet because there was no time, but with more people, of course, that this could go a little bit faster. Uh, we are on Freenode on my Matrix and on Discord. And that may not fully work because uh, Matrix is not bridged to Freenode properly, so uh, so that that may be a little bit dicey. But there are are a few people on Matrix from uh, from OpenSUSE Heroes, so still that that probably would work to at uh, to some degree. And at least I'll be there. And yeah. and Stasiak will be there. I know. I think there are f um, a few more people that are mm -hmm. or Matrix too. But, but yeah. And and that's a thank you card. And I welcome any questions that that may be coming this way. Um, I have one. Sure. Actually, I have, I have two. Well, all the uh, questions. So with the uh. uh TSP you mentioned moving from Connect. Um, I recently looked. We haven't obviously since COVID. We haven't really needed needed it so much. But I recently looked into it and found out that I don't no longer have access to uh, grant TSP um, requests, and and I, I don't think that anyone has been able to put anything in since the update. I I, I emailed Ancor about it, so we're actually. Um, he said he'd take a look at it later. But I figured it was probably the migration that had something to do with it. Yeah, it, that... it, might, it might have had some. Yeah, the database was migrated duplicated. Directly. Yeah, so yeah, that so shouldn't be much of an issue. But they're not getting updated anymore. It's kind of it's, so. At this point, I think um, if I remember how this thing actually works, uh, so TSP used to just yank account data straight out of connect um and now that connect is more or less gone um it's not really in use uh tsp doesn't have anywhere to get new account information so at this point it's um semi non-functional i guess we can count kind of 
stars that we didn't need it this year, but um, probably needs to be fixed before we, you know, go back to the whole, well, we're traveling for conferences again. Maybe that will happen at some point. I think uh, that's actually I, sh I should look at it because yeah I did I did have the whole migration so because because we kind of wanted to do that quickly because well, well we needed to kill off connect very quickly well <laughs> connect still isn't dead <laughs> I know I know I said we wanted to I didn't say we did yeah that was back when we were we were more more hopeful about connect being being dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's... So, so, Anchor um, definitely like when you when you have the opportunity to take a look at it, Anchor is a good person yeah. to sure probably go through it with you to, just as the idea how that whole thing was set up. Okay. But the other thing was the other question I had was um, with um, with of open source event manager. I know that Hannah, I always contact Hannah when I need something updated with the system. Um, mm -hmm. Cause it's, it tends, it tends to have some issues, but you know, he, he meant, he says that he knows it. Um, so I, I don't know how we, how we can solve it. I, it's always difficult to on an upgrade because when you upgrade it introduces some bugs and when we're in the middle of like a call for papers or something like that, which is somewhat constant. Um, you know, you end up with some some very difficult situations that uh, that you can't really do much with. But do you guys have any oversight on that, or have you looked at that at all? So, unfortunately, OSEM is not part of the Hero set of applications. It I is, believe that it, it is it is maintained uh, kind of it it isn't maintained on salt, so it's kind of harder for us to tell actually how this is done. Uh, yeah, uh, I was under the impression we didn't actually maintain it because it is it is, it is listed on on the machines, so it is it is okay. So we have access to it. Yeah, it is in the network. So, uh, yeah. Well, okay. so much for saying that I know all the, we know all the machines yeah. that we have because because that's clearly not true. Yeah, this, this is this is actually uh, yeah this is this is kind of uh, kind of a shame because. There are some machines that actually should probably be maintained uh, together with, with everything else, but due to some circumstances, they just aren't. And mm. I think I think in time we kind of have to take a look at it and and actually <laughs> fix that. I, I think that'll actually improve as you know we talked about earlier about having the Packer instance and moving the salt. Uh, salt states to to the Pagger system. Uh, I think once we do that and essentially democratize the access to contribute to the to the repo, um, it'll be a lot easier for people to um, pitch in uh, or at least kind of figure out how to get started and and make that uh, and feel more a part of the of the underpinnings of OpenSUSE because our infrastructure is, is king for us. It's what makes the project works as well as it does. Okay, thank you. Um, that was just my questions. If anyone else has, has anything. Yeah, anyone else has got questions? We're here to answer them. Or we can just look at LCP's list of emails that he's importing, which is probably not what he intended to do. I have an awkward question. Maybe. Oh, Richard. Yeah, what's yeah. up? Why don't? Why are we hosting so much of our own services and not either getting other companies to host it for us or sponsor us for it, or you know, why? Yeah, or cloud providers, all that kind of stuff. Why? Why are we? Sort of stuck in this old-fashioned thing of you know our own little network behind our own VPN and doing things that way. Considering that our experience with outsourcing some hosting, uh, here examples like Paste or uh, I don't know what else. What else did? Well, I mean, up until about you know three or four months ago, the forums was outsourced. Yes. Uh, as was the account system, 
Arsenios uh, and uh, Lisa exactly, and, and that's kind of my point. Is you know, three or four months ago, oh, my camera disappeared. Three or four months ago, we were saying, you know, help. We need more people. We've got too much work. You know, the heroes are too busy. We can't have a hard. We have a hard time maintaining everything we've got. And then since then, we've added more things that the heroes are maintaining. And it's really cool that you guys are doing it and you're all enthusiastic, but it's like, I'm just kind of looking at this from a sustainability point of view, you know. Sure. But a bus hits the two of you and the, <laughs> and like you say, the project, you know, everything is, um, you know, our infra is everything that makes Open Suza special. So, you know, a bus hits the two of you and Open Suza stops kind of scares me. <laughs> so uh, yeah that's that's fair so we, we live very far apart to be fair so yeah <laughs> if a butt sits both of us in this particular time and era i'd be a very i'd be very impressed but uh if, if especially if it's the same bus <laughs> but um it's a fair question richard um so some of the um multiple services that we have that we're that we're bringing online today are actually intended to consolidate or eliminate duplicate services that we currently have in service. So for example, um, we have three or four instances of random code repo hosting in OpenSUSE today that serve no valuable uh, reason to be duplicates. So consolidating that on the Pagger instance and the end state is that we're going to migrate all the data out of Redmine and into Pagger. So we will eliminate about four services in the context of moving to Pagger. Um, the mailman's, the mailing list service is considered fundamentally critical. And so this is about a, a upgrade of that existing infrastructure from one that is actually broken and cannot be maintained. So the current mailing list software just doesn't work. We can't really move it forward. So that's why we're making this change now. Um, the matrix stuff is mostly because it is currently impossible to, without Matrix, it's currently impossible to have all the project members everywhere being able to communicate with each other. So the idea is to break down silos. So that added services we feel is worth it given that it helps you know, improve the communication across, across the project. But in general, our plan with these new services, so like Noggin, is actually decomming three services when we when we switch over to it. We are getting rid of Connect. We are going to get rid of um, some of the other weird stuff that we have right now for for account identity infrastructure. We're gonna and consolidate all of that. So the goal is we want to have a coherent set of services that support the entire project. And where it makes sense, we continue to maintain. And where it doesn't. We can we can look at other options like so the open SUSE forums. Uh, I think the only reason we're currently planning on continuing to host it is because nobody wants to do the work. Nobody externally like uh, I've informally done a couple of asks about it. Nobody wants to do the data migration because apparently it's too weird and too hard. So and we don't really want to lose. I think what's almost twenty years worth of, of data. So we're doing the we're going to be doing the data migration ourselves, and we'll be at least for the short to medium term hosting discourse ourselves. In the future, it may be we decide to migrate it to you know we we set up an arrangement with discourse the business, and and we migrate the data down to that path. We will still have the federated identity service and stuff like that. That'd be a similar arrangement to what, for example, the Fedora project does for their discourse instances. Um, but since we already have to maintain a forum, we might as well maintain put something that we can actually maintain rather than something that's basically broken. Um, so it's a fair question. Hopefully that answers it. Um, you know, it, it does. Thanks. But yeah, like fundamentally, we're not. The goal is to not add a ridiculous number of extra services. Um, and, in, by and large, we're actually, I think, on a net basis, going to reduce the number of services we are maintaining as part of Heroes. But we are also going to increase the number of services that are managed through um, through something that basically anyone can participate in. So the Salt repo will actually know how to set up all of our services, or we're going to have like some kind of, if we ever have a, a Kubernetes or something like that, then we will do it that way. 
Um, so right now we're working with what we have, with, which is right now a bunch of virtual machines and a salt, man, and a salt repo. And so we're, we're configuring with salt and provisioning it that way. But because everything is managed in salt and we have all these descriptions set up correctly, um, hopefully, uh, it means that if Stasiak and I were managed to be hit by a magic bus that could cross continents in the same day, um, then the project will survive because there will, there will be knowledge, there'll be maintained services, there'll be configuration descriptions, and all of the projects we're using have, have reasonably strong communities. So there will be people who can help. So that's, that's sort of uh, the, the goal here. Cool, glad to hear it. Thank you for the questions, Richard. Anyone so, else? Well, actually, I have a bonus answer for Richard. So experience with MSIT shows that it's easier and faster to do things yourself. So, might sound funny, but... And, and I, I mean, not to be blunt, but that is totally and utterly pointlessly irrelevant because MFIT have no relationship with SUSE in any way, manner, or form now. So thanks for the data point, but it's a different world now. Yeah, and while it is true our previous experiences have, to put it nicely, sucked, um, that doesn't change the fact that in the future we could find, have positive relationships with opportunities to work with, um, you know, uh, companies that s do open source project services. Uh, I am not completely opposed to the idea of giving discourse money to run discourse. Uh, if it makes sense and if we can have a reasonable SLA around it, that's fine. Um, I am not sure they could provide said reasonable SLA, but my experiences so far seeing it in Fedora have been okay. Um, but again, it's something worth evaluating in the future. I want us to be, and I believe, I think Stasiak would agree with me here. I think we want to be in a good place to make those those um, decisions before we start, you know, making those decisions with without the full ability to implement them. Yeah, I would agree. Someone is asking uh, Sirindi, how can I help? So uh, Stasiak, do you want to answer that question? Well, uh, there are a lot of ways to help. And that, of course, includes the, the basic things that, that's related to all of our infrastructure, so translations and, and development of, of different websites, which is done on, on mostly on GitHub. Uh, there are quite a, quite a few of repositories. I don't know. Depending on what what your interest is, I, I could probably link you something something uh, more spe more specific. But uh, the the bulk of of the work that is currently done is in uh, in migrations, which is really hard to actually help. Pawn with. off. Yeah, we, it's actually quite hard to divvy up work for, for migrations because some of it also winds up being a little um, uh, uh, complicated. And, and, and granting the, the most challenging part, and this is the part I want to fix once we have our Packer instance online, the most challenging part is the catch-22 of you need to be trusted to have internal infrastructure access before you can start contributing. There is actually no reason for that to be a requirement. In Fedora infrastructure, for example, that is not a requirement. I have contributed and helped support infra Fedora infrastructure projects without ever having root access to any infrastructure. Yeah, and that's exactly. something, and that that's something, well, uh, and that's something, <laughs> <laughs> Richard. <laughs> no, they trust me fine. It's just, uh, I, I haven't actually asked for it. I haven't needed it. Um, but I want us to be in a position where we can have the same flexibility. Uh, I want the opportunity for anybody, any geeko in the community to help with our infrastructure because it is what helps make our project great. And, you know, the good, the services we offer are the services that power the contribution 
And so we want to make sure that that is also as accessible to contribution. So that's also, sort of, of those, at least my personal vision. Some of those services that we mentioned also no, don't have any, uh, any uh, salt configurations written for them yet. So that can also be helpful. Yeah, once we have a public salt repo, we could actually add a list of tasks and say, hey, if you yeah. guys have salt interest, if you have salt experience, you could give a shot at like helping us write these these salt states so that we can actually like manage them. And then we can figure out how to do like since we now have staging and dev infrastructure for everything, we can run them on there and see if they break everything without actually breaking production. Uh, you've always testing in production. It's the only real way to do anything. <laughs> Richard? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's sort of fair, but like, I, I, I'd like to at least have pull requests not run on production. <laughs> Any other questions from folks? Well, I, I want to thank you all. I mean, I actually, I didn't hear any of what Richard said. I just listened to the answer, but um, I assume no one else has answered, asked any more questions. Well, I mean, you're welcome. And Richard just asked, why are we, why are we doing this more or less? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'll let you answer that. And I'll just mute. Oh, no, no. I already answered it. I, I said that basically we're doing this because we want to simplify our infrastructure to accelerate contributions uh, and and you know advance the open SUSE community. I, I tried so hard to do the weird SUSE tagline thing, but I forgot the third word, so I, I screwed up. I'm sorry. But <laughs> but the whole point is that we wanna we wanna make it a better experience for open SUSE contributors to it uh, to work in the project and so that everyone can enjoy being part of the community. That's that's the real goal. Cool. Well, thank you. And we appreciate, we appreciate everything you guys are doing. Um, so it looks like we probably have a break for another um, hour, roughly. The wow, that's talk. nice. <laughs> yeah, at, at least at, at least in this room. I mean, there, there's other rooms in, in the, there's other talks happening in room one. Um, so the next talk that'll take place is, uh, um, improving the user experience, and that'll take place in this room. And of course, mm -hmm. uh, Neil, you have a talk happening at the same time uh, about uh, the OPS. Yep. And and data. And thank you for sponsoring, by the way. Oh yeah, my pleasure, as always. So enjoy beer, hang out, talking here if you want, whatnot. Sure. And, uh, thank you. <laughs>